magazine, we kick things off with football. Europe's premier club football competition, the UEFA Champions League, comes to an end this Saturday with the final between Borussia Dortmund and Real Madrid at the Wembley Stadium in London. Real Madrid will be seeking a record-extending 15th Champions League title, while Borussia Dortmund will be hoping that it's second time lucky as they return to the Wembley Stadium. The venue they contested their last Champions League final, which ended in a 2-1 defeat to Bayern Munich in 2013. Well, Dortmund coach Edin Terzic has acknowledged that they are underdogs heading into the contest. This is what he said. It's almost surreal, I think, in the grand scheme of things, we deserved to reach the final. I know we won't be favourites and it will be extremely difficult, but it's just one match and over the course of one game, anything is possible. We've proven that already. Meanwhile, Real Madrid manager Carlo Ancelotti has credited the strength of his squad for steering them to another Champions League final. We've had so many problems, so many big injuries, not just the guys who were out long term. We lost Vinicius Jr., Bellingham and others for decent spells and nobody really talked about that. We have fantastic ability and character in this squad. Well, joining us now to preview the final is European football correspondent Simon Evans. Simon, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Hi, I'm alright, good to be here, yeah. Yeah, so Real Madrid for the first time in their history can lift to the Champions League trophy without registering a draw in the campaign. Are they favourites to do so? Oh, absolutely. Huge favourites, I think, yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it's unusual, I think, in the Champions League final to have a situation where you can clearly identify one of the teams as such strong favourites. But I think in this case, it really is uh, Real Madrid. Right, and you know, a lot of that favourite tag goes down to the fact that one, the team has already um, won the competition so many times, more than everybody else, and their star-studded cast. And I think a lot of credit goes to that, Simon. Let's talk a bit about the players that are expected to come to the party. Yeah, I mean, it's a team that's full of quality. Um, it's a team that's uh, welded together superbly by Ancelotti, I think. But, you know, the pace that they've got with the wide players, in particular, Vinicius and uh, Rodrigo, I think, uh, give them something special. You know, people wondered how this Real Madrid side was going to uh, cope without, um, you know, in the era where they don't have Ronaldo, they don't have Benzema that they had for a while after that as well. But they've adapted very well, um, and I think I think those two players that I mentioned, Vinicius and Rodrigo, can give them give them an awful lot. But there's this solidity, and and you know, Bellingham I think is a player who just continues to amaze really that you know he ever since he was a young teenager in England where people said oh you've got to watch out for this kid he's something special every time you watch him step up a level he continues to impress and, and has done so at Real Madrid as well an absolutely extraordinary talent yeah and speaking about extraordinary talent a name that has been shining just like he has been shining in the goal Andre Lunin uh, does he get to play this Saturday, or do you see um, Carlo Ancelotti going with his main man, Thibaut Courtois? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people suggested that Courtois is, is fit again after that injury. Um, it's a tough one, isn't it? When you have a goalkeeper who's been out for a while with an injury and has battled to try and come back, and you've got a keeper there who's, who's, who's capable of doing the job. But uh, difficult choices, but knowing Ancelotti, he will tend to always err on the side of experience. And, uh, and I think, you know, if he's, if he's got the chance to play Courtois, he will do. Yeah, of course, Ancelotti will be um, a man that nobody will want to question. But what's for sure, Simon, if things don't go right in goal and he doesn't choose the right person, according to the fans, he's going to get a lot of flack for that. Oh yeah, he's under such uh, heavy scrutiny uh, or, or for everything, every Real Madrid uh, coach is. But the thing about Ancelotti is he doesn't get much wrong, he really doesn't. I mean, you look at his career, it's an extraordinary career. And you know, when he went to Everton for a while, people thought, well, maybe he's winding down his career a little bit now. He's, he's, he's going to a, a middle-ranking club for, for maybe a little bit of an easier ride. 
and then up he pops again at Real Madrid and competing at the, at the absolute highest level. Don Carlo, they call him in, in Madrid, and, and uh, <laughs> he really is. He's also, you know, not to not to sort of name drop or anything, but over my career working in Italy uh, earlier in my career and then working working in England as well, he's somebody I've come across a few times and been able to interview, and he's the nicest guy. And you know, he doesn't look. When you see him on the sidelines there in his suit with his sort of stern face, he doesn't look the friendliest type of uh, guy. Well, that's quite deceptive. He's a, a really super nice guy. Yeah, he just means business when he's doing his job. That's but, it. Yeah, and another team, of course, um, that will mean business, of course, Borussia Dortmund. They'll be coming up against a team. Um, you heard from the coach saying they are being seen as underdogs. But there are two players that I want to point out that would have been with the team since 2013 when they made the UEFA Champions League finals. That's, of course, Marco Ruiz and Matt Hummels. They will have a, a big part to play if the team is, of course, to put up a fight and maybe even go on to win because, I mean, it's football. Anything can happen in 90 minutes. Yeah, of course anything can happen. They've, you know, you've identified two experienced players. Whether they both start, I don't know. But but they've, 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 um, they've played to their strengths, really. I mean, this is not a great Dortmund side. I don't think, you know, we can compare it with with, with that side from uh, 2013 or the or the earlier versions, those great versions that had those battles with Juventus in the 90s and so on. It's not a vintage Dortmund team, but it's a team that has uh, found a way to get results, has been solid. Um, you know, in the past, the thing with Dortmund was they always used to go out and find these young talent, um, get them, and then they'd be forced to sell them, and there'd be frustration that they couldn't compete with Bayern Munich domestically because they were always having to sell one or two players every year. Um, and they haven't really been signing those kind of players. So they, they're an older side now, and uh, you see some players there like Emery Chan and so on, who've been around for quite a long time. An older, more experienced side, a, a less exciting side, but that kind of pragmatic approach that comes when you have an older and more experienced team seems to deliver the results for them. Yeah, Simon, there is no noticeable weakness that Carlo Ancelotti has, and you just referenced his, his track record. But sometimes, in a, in a one-off game or a knockout game, there are strategies coaches can use um, as an underdog coach to, to get results. Is there anything that you're seeing in Terzic's um, approach or his acumen that suggests that he could find some, some tools on Saturday to disturb Real Madrid? Yeah, I mean, one thing is that, you know, a lot of teams in Germany um, uh, have... have competed in Europe by excessive, I would say, but certainly a lot of pressing, high energy pressing. Dortmund don't do that, yeah? And that's not necessarily uh, a bad thing against a team like Real Madrid, because they, they, they want you to kind of come onto them and press them and, and, and let, give them the opportunity to break through the lines and so on. So, you know, if, if they're going to sit there a little bit and say, OK, we're going we're gonna to defend a little bit deeper here, we're not going to give you much space to get the ball over the top because your wide players are so fast. Why should we give you those space out wide? Why don't we just sit deep a little bit um, and see what you can do with the ball and see if we can't hit you on the counter attack. And it's an old approach, you know, there's nothing uh, super new or progressive about it at all to play a deep line defense and try and hit on the counter. But yeah. I do think that's the way I'd go about playing Real Madrid at the moment. Yeah, and of course, you know, we're coming off a, a week where we've seen a couple of stunning upsets in, in finals, um, Simon. Atalanta shocking Bayer Leverkusen, Man United shocking Man City. You don't suggest that Real Madrid will be looking at those two results and making sure that they don't fall victim? Oh, man, we've come to a strange point, haven't we, in English football, where Manchester United winning the FA Cup is considered a huge upset. But that's, <laughs> but that's, that's where we are now. <laughs> that's where we are, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think it would be an even bigger one if Dortmund did this final. I really do. I don't want to sort of, you know, downplay their chances because they're, they're a great club. But uh, that this is not a great Dortmund team, but it's got to the final of the Champions League. Um, and obviously there's a reason for that. So, yes, they could go on and, and, and produce an upset here, but it would be a massive upset. Yeah, that's for sure. And when you look at Dortmund's... Um trek towards this 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 stage of the competition very few people two months ago expected them to to get here and i think when i listen to the narrative coming out of the dortmund camp there 
pretty pragmatic. They understand the job that faces them. Their coach has accepted that they're, they're underdogs here. But um, I, I think there's a part of them that will go in with some confidence that they could, could pull the upset off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think if you have results like beating Paris Saint-Germain, which was a big upset, once you've done that, um, that, then you have that belief and, and, and that, that confidence. And the longer the game goes on, um, and the longer the game goes on scoreless or, 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 or should they get in front, the more that belief will grow. Um, so, you know, you look, at, you look at them as a side and they, they've got some quality players there. I mean, the left back they've got on loan from Chelsea, Ian Martin, who's a, a Dutch international. He's uh, one of those very modern day attacking fullbacks who, who likes to get forward and even gets into central positions. He's the kind of player who could pull off a run uh, at any stage in that game and, and dribble past two or three players and put the ball in the top corner. I've seen him do it uh, numerous times when he was on loan at uh, Burnley last season in England. And uh, you know, a player like that could suddenly come up and surprise Real Madrid. So there, there is talent and quality in that team. No doubt about it, but uh, yeah, to repeat myself endlessly, Real Madrid are clearly the favourite. Yeah, Fulcrook has netted twice in the last three Dortmund um, games and has shown the, the kind of tenacity and the, 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 the crunch moment deliveries to suggest that Real Madrid should probably pay some attention to him Saturday. Yeah, I like him. He's a, he's a, a little bit of a throwback in some ways, isn't he? You know, he's, he's that kind of... Uh, traditional sort of centre forward um, with, with a bit of height and strength um, so they can play those balls over the top to him um, which again could be a factor could, you know, especially if you're going to be playing you know, that kind of counter-attacking football a little bit more so he, he, could be, uh, he could be a very key player, you're right Yeah, and, um, the talent and the, the tools that Real Madrid have going into the game endless, um, Simon and um, I, I'm not sure what what but uh, what what Borussia Dortmund can do to try to stop the you know the sort of uh, all conquering flow that Real Madrid has at every part of their game from the back to the front yeah it is it's, it does, again in the wide areas but then if it's not in the wide areas they control it so well in the middle and uh, you know you obviously Bellingham as we talked about obviously Modric is a player who <coughs> excuse me um it's fundamental to them, so, you know, they've got so many options there. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, do you have a prediction for us here, um, Simon, going into this game? I know we accept that Real Madrid are favourites, but, and I think you're going to predict them winning, but do you have a scoreline? Yeah, I'm going to go for uh, a narrow 1-0 win. I think Dortmund will put up a good fight, um, and I, I might end up being quite late before Real Madrid do it, but they will do it by one goal. And the fact is that Real Madrid's European track record is, is so dominant. They've won more European titles than, uh, well, more than twice the number of titles that any other team has won. So uh, title number 15 for them would just be sort of putting an exclamation mark on, on their European dominance. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? There's no, there's no one like it. We look at, we look at some of the, you know, the great clubs around Europe, and they're not even close anymore, are they, to what Real Madrid after what they've done over the last decade? You know, you talk about clubs like Milan and Liverpool. Um, no, it's hugely impressive. Yeah, well, Simon, of course, you know, we're looking forward to the Champions League final. It will be live on your home of champions. Um, the, the thing is, many people have already, you know, made up their mind and concluded that Real Madrid will walk away with the title yet again but for me I'm hoping that you know at least Borussia Dortmund put up a competitive fight and not just allow Real Madrid to come out in their style and be so dominant I want to see a fight at least yeah I think you will see a fight I think you'll see see a Dortmund side that that's going to try and make make the most of this occasion for sure yeah well Simon looking forward to talk to you especially after the um, Champions League winner is crowned. I'm hoping that it's a Borussia Dortmund win, but we'll wait and see. All right, all the best. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Have a great evening. Of course, Simon Evans Day, our football correspondent. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we still have more football to talk about because there was the UEFA Conference League that on your home of champions. Let's take a break.